I love money and I love creating and I love working, but I wasn't born rich. I created it all. 99% of what you think about money, what you know about money are lies. Dream big, have no limitations and turn money into your servant and stop being the slave of the financial reality that's out there today. You can change that and you can start today. <laughs> what a great video. I loved it. Thank you, Becky. Wonderful <laughs> creation. Hello, good evening. I am so excited to be here with you. And um, one, to be able to um, talk about money, right? <laughs> oh, that's money, that's my it? favorite topic. <laughs> and um, what I'm actually really excited to talk about is um, the advanced how to become money workbook. Um, I think this book has been around for a really long time and it's one that I tend to avoid doing. <laughs> I mean, I have it, like I've highlighted a lot of stuff um, and I've browsed through it, but it's not really something that um, I've just been willing um, just to dive into. And I wonder how many other people are, have that or they're like, what the heck is this book? Well, for me, it's kind of, it's the next level of mm. your willingness to look at your financial reality. Um, yeah. It is uncomfortable. And this is why, why a lot of people avoid it, including myself. It was the one book where I went like, oh, do I really need it? I'm doing quite well. And um, yeah, you know, leave it here, take a look, do it later. Um, it is intense um, because it goes it goes so deep, it goes to those areas where you don't even want to look at, that you might not even know they exist. So <laughs> it is it is intense, it is uncomfortable. So um, it's it's only for the brave ones. <laughs> wow, it's only for the brave ones. Well, so when you did this, what did it change for you? Um, honestly, at the beginning, I didn't notice. At the mm -hmm. beginning, I didn't notice it was it was on the way I finished it um, and things started to change. I couldn't really relate it to to the to the uh, advanced mm -hmm. how to become money workbook until someone asked me, I said, hey, there's something different now. What did you do? And I was like, oh, my God, it is ah. that it's the advanced money workbook. And that's probably also a thing where. Um, don't expect any big change. The, I don't know, twenty thousand dollar on your bank account. So are you yeah. winning in the lottery or inheriting uh, a fortune? Um, it changes the foundation of you being with money and creates that platform that allows you to create your own financial reality the way it works for you. So it's kind of the beginning of a long term process, um, changing you into what you desire to be rather than making you rich, you know, making you rich is you having $20,000 on your bank account. That's one way out of a million to have money. So it, it's kind of wider, broader, yeah. and goes way deeper. <laughs> well, even for me, when I was um, really looking through the book again, um, even just recently, it to me, it looks like there's a lot of like actually becoming money. Like the it's, energy of becoming money. Can you like talk about like becoming money? The whole thing about money is, I mean, what, what you think is what you get. Your point of view creates mm. your reality. And money is the one thing where we constantly are being the energy of lack. If you want to try that out, make a note or be present when you go through life. You 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 wake up in the morning until you go to bed in the evening again. How many times do you go, I wish I could afford that. Maybe one day I can have it. I don't have the money. I wish I had this. I wish I could do this. I wish I could do that. It's not that we go and see something and saying, oh, I can't afford it. That's that's kind of a, an underlying and an autopilot programming you see someone, I don't know, you, you go to the airport, you see the first class counter, you automatically go, oh, I can't afford this. Not cognitively. That's the underlying energy we are being. And that's, that's what needs to change. It's that underlying energy that we are constantly being. It's this area 
where we cognitively don't recognize how we limit ourselves. Um, yeah. and that's why it's a slightly different process than going, oh, do this, say that, do this clearing, um, do this energy pool. The advanced money work will go to a whole layer deeper to, to change that, what allows you to be money. I started, I started changing that and I stopped being that constant energy of lack. I go, okay, what would it take? Let's see, let's find out, you know, that reactivating that curiosity that we all had as children before we bought the lies and limitations of this reality, that there are things that we simply can't have in life, not this lifetime, maybe next. Um, you're not born rich, you're not born in this country, you're not born in this culture. Yeah. You know, all this, we take it for granted, but nothing, nothing is for granted. You can have it all. <laughs> well, I think, you know, if anyone's watching this, they're like, oh, David, it's so easy for you. You're rich. Like, you've always had money. But, like, that's uh, not actually the case. You didn't really, you didn't grow up with money, right? Like, your, oh, did your family have, like, wonderful points of view about my yeah, my My family, they are communists and socialists. Okay, <laughs> My grandmother had nine children. She was working class, nine children. Uh, my grandfather was uh, working in the local post office. They were really hardworking, um, lower class, working class people with nine children. And my, the last child was my mom. Uh, she was a housewife. My dad was an accountant. Um, we didn't suffer. Okay. I never, I, I wasn't starving to death. I always had everything I needed to survive, but that was it. More than what is needed to survive was considered, oh my God, um, don't fly too high um, because then you might lose it or be happy with what you yeah. have. Um, all these points of views. And yeah. what I, what I actually, what, what, it wasn't really fun the way I grew up because we grew up in, in, in a very poor neighborhood right next to the richest area of Vienna. So I had all this wealth and riches in front of my eyes, knowing, wow, that that's a different world. And then coming home and going, why, why don't I have that? <laughs> um, luckily, I didn't go into that's unfair. I was always curious about how it would mm. be to have it all. You know, I, I could yeah. see the, the kids, the school kids that were driven by a driver to, the, to school, like, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love that. When you said that, like my mom's favorite thing was like, Becky, you can't get everything that you want. Yep, that's how we grew up. Then, yeah, yeah the two sing like the Rolling Stone song to like, and then that was even like add to the more annoyance, like you can't always get, and I'd be like, what do you mean? Like, what do you mean I can't have everything? Why? And, and how dangerous it is and that, that the rich people are, are only unhappy and it's all about the money. And I, I remember I, I really, I did whatever it took to get out of poverty. I went to university. I had a job. I started collecting empty glass bottles when I was six, okay, for one cent per bottle. I always wanted more money. And I remember even then when I graduated from high school and I opened my law firm, one day my, my, my dad basically told me, what did we do wrong that you ended up like this only <laughs> greedy for money <laughs> and i was like what you should be proud of me but they aren't because they couldn't they they, they were hating money so much um and were basing mm -hmm. everything on there are higher values than money and love and friendship and family all these things that you can't buy with money you're missing out on that. And now you don't even know who are your friends because mm. when you're rich, they are all after your money. I mean, this is, this is what's going on inside of us. This is how we are actually, um, this is what they infiltrate in our brains when we grow up. And a lot of that was hidden. I was like, why am I not choosing this? Why am I concerned about this? Why, I, why am I doubting myself? Because I was full of lies and paranoia that was put into my head when I was a child, the way I grew up. Yeah, well, and you know, I, what I love um, creating with you, David, because you have this, um, like this trust in you. And when you speak, like you talk about so many fun things like stocks and, you know, being a lawyer and contracts and all the different things. Um, and you have such a sense of like having your back. And that's why I'm always like, whenever you're doing something, I'm like I'll have that. Because um, looking at this, the um, Advanced Money Workbook, Chapter 3, and that's actually in Chapter 3, is trusting yourself. 
Because all this stuff that we learned when we were young, like you said, you don't even know that that's really going through that. So how did you really get to know what you, what, what you know? I didn't have that until I met Access Consciousness. It ah. was the tools that allowed me to look at that. I felt guilty. I, I supported my entire family. I paid for all my friends, vacation, everything. I was guilty because I always, they always said, well, you, you, you're so lucky. You were, and you, you were intelligent and you were so lucky in life. And, you, you know, everything is lucky and everything, this is so unfair. You can't have more than others. Therefore, you have to share. I started, I trained it. I, I it mm. took me five years to actually go, wait a minute, I'm not wrong and unfair does not exist. And yeah. luck does not exist. And I can have more while others have less. Me having less is not a contribution to those who have less. It's a choice how much you have. And that's what I acknowledge. I will wait a minute. It's everyone's choice. Fair and unfair and luck is just an excuse of the lazy ones <laughs> or of the judgmental ones. That's what, what, what made me look at, wait a minute, I'm, I'm basically not wrong for desiring money. You know, these mean, ruthless capitalists that they always draw up in all these Hollywood movies. <laughs> the, yeah. the, the mean ones are always rich and the real cool, kind ones are always poor. Um, such a mainstream lie. And I, I actually started there. I was like, wait a minute. I'm not wrong for these desires. And a lot of people, especially in the spiritual mm -hmm. world, they are somehow made wrong for having materialistic desires. Yeah. Because everything is about consciousness and the being and the soul and you name it. No, it's not. We also have bodies and our bodies love to be nurtured. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's actually, it starts way deeper. Um, and once you acknowledge that, you have that, okay? You, you, you cannot not have it when you, when you know who you are. Um, and then yeah. if you start enjoying it, it grows. Yeah. And that is the most beautiful part of this. You need to get it once, enjoy it, and then it grows automatically because money follows joy. Money follows happiness. Money, money is there to make your life easier. It's the, it's the oil of your engine. It's there to support you. So opening up yourself to receiving that, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, it's like the rocket fuel that just gets you to go whoom. And, you know, I've been, um, I actually set an alarm on my phone um, from, I don't remember if it was the uh, Right Riches for You class, but mm -hmm. something was said. And so it's been three months now. I, I have an alarm that goes up every day of like, what is my financial reality? And, you know, asking yourself these questions and for me asking like what is my financial reality i realized there was a lot of things with money and investing and different things that i just wouldn't do because i didn't understand it and then so i'm like you know i just i don't understand this it's but then i got you know like they don't actually make it so you can understand so actually like what would i be willing to know <laughs> Right. And so it's really opened up a lot. Like, asking what are you willing questions? to know? And what are you willing to question as well? Just because someone mm -hmm. says it's complicated. Okay. Let me take a look. The question is not, is it too complicated? The question is, is it fun for me? Do I want it? There are things in life where I could have made so much money. It wasn't fun. I wasn't interested. So I just mm -hmm. didn't do it. Mm -hmm. And then friends again told me, Oh no, my God, you, you missed out on this opportunity. And mm -hmm. I was like, well, too bad. I had fun somewhere else. So oh, it's not cool. about that you have to, it's this, it's this gift of, no, look what works for you and then choose yeah. what's fun for you. And then really money becomes the side product. It becomes the result of your creations. And it will always, it will always be there when you are willing to receive it, when you are willing and allowing it to support you. And when you finally stop hating it, I think that's also mm. How much do people hate money? Not hate money, hate the fact that money is dominant. <laughs> oh, hate, the fact, hate the fact that money is dominant. They hate, well, yeah, it's this money is power. Say more on that. Like, well, it is what it is, yeah. So how many people hate the fact that money is so powerful, that with money everything is easy, and that the rich people, uh, it's that. It's that. It's kind of money is used. To, to justify fairness and unfairness 
which is also just a lie from my point of view. Just don't buy into it. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Why, um, why now? Why did you decide now to do the um, advanced how to become money worker? Well, honestly, um, I would not finish the advanced how to become money worker if I didn't facilitate a class. So <laughs> I know I love that you're doing it. That's I'm like, yeah, I finally actually get to go through the whole month. <laughs> I'm, I do it every year. I do the, the regular money work work every year and the advanced every year. Why? Because I change over time. Okay. I become more, I change, I move on. And every time I do it, I perceive and see and read and get something different. So that's why I personally do it every year for myself. And why now? Because now I have time to do it and I actually do it as a class to force myself to follow through. That's kind of a self manipulation because I know I myself. <laughs> and that's part of what I learned in this book. It's okay. You don't have to be perfect, but find a way that works for you. And my way is, well, facilitate a class. So you have to follow through. Um, otherwise you have to pay back the money <laughs> and I don't want that. I love it too much. <laughs> well, I love that. And um, anything else that you, uh, is there a, invite that you want to um send out to people is there anything else that we could say about the advanced money workbook before we go well whether you have done it or not or whether you you, you mm. feel attracted to it or not if you take the book or imagine the book and ask the question what will my life be like in five years if i choose this yeah then look what shows up that energy it's not about immediate results okay that's that's my favorite question actually what will my life be like if I actually choose this, if I be this, if I practice this, and if I am from now on be willing to be present with my finances as well, what will my life be like if I start with that today? And then, well, follow what's light for you. Make a choice. <laughs> I love that. Thank you so much for this. And if you're wondering, there will be um, nine calls and um it does start uh september 30th so you yes. still have um you still have time to join us and we do it over three weeks three calls per week um i always give some extra homework and what i learned about this advanced money workbook you need time and space to let it settle in and digest it <laughs> so we'll be together for three weeks and then just explore and deep dive into the mystery of lies and manipulation and limitations <laughs> around money. <laughs> yeah, and what I love doing classes with you is you'll go anywhere. Of like course. You, always, you know, <laughs> and people have questions that come up. There's just so much. Um, and when you have like this group that um, it's like each of you have each other's back with this. You know, that's the fun part. You do it together yeah. and together it's just, yeah. Together yeah. you're less alone. What shall I say? <laughs> it's more <Yes>. fun. <laughs> Keep me accountable. So thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Peggy. Thank you, everyone. And maybe I see you at our at my money workbook and we change yeah. financial realities together. Yeah. All right. Bye everyone. Bye-bye.